Divorce lawyers. What's the most outrageous reason someone filed for divorce? I used to work in a general practice firm, and the guy that worked across the hallway from me was a family law attorney. He was a good attorney, but every day I would hear him yelling on the phone at his clients. One day I asked him why he did it when it was obviously stressful in a non-legal work type of way. He pointed out that there's one chapter of statutes dedicated to it, and you need to know a little civil procedure, and that's about it. It's an amazing segment of business. Not only is it not that difficult from an intellectual rigor perspective, but holy crap. Those family law attorneys make serious bank for willing to put up with the headaches. I would routinely hear him yelling at clients like, Don't go over there. I'm instructing you to not go there. If you go there, I will fire you as a client, and when you go to jail, I won't take your call. For the record, this was in a fairly affluent suburb. Most of the disputes that would drive him into my office for a break would revolve around parents wanting to know their recourse for ex-hubby dropping the kids off four minutes later than agreed and how the client planned to get even. I also recall one time a client had gotten his cell phone number and called him on a Saturday evening with some emergency. Spoiler, his ex had done something egregious like taking the kids to the pool without his consent. So on Monday morning, the attorney sent the client an invoice for $500 for a Saturday phone call, which probably lasted like five minutes. He did it so the guy would call him and say, what's this? And then the attorney could explain to him that this is what he charges for non-emergency weekend calls. This time he'd waive it, but if he ever did it again, he could be sure to get a bill that he'd end up paying. I'm in the wrong line of work. Story two. Not necessarily the most outrageous reason, but definitely some outrageous conduct. The saddest divorce we were hired to do, but ended up not doing for reasons that'll become apparent, was a woman in her 50s whose husband had really just let himself go. He was over 400 pounds, just did his third triple bypass, refused to do anything different, just smoked and drank all day while watching TV. His doctors told him he was going to pass away in six months if he didn't change his behavior. He told them they were all morons and could go to hell. Meanwhile, his wife is this successful woman who makes over $10,000 a month in her hobby while making six figures in her normal work. She lost all respect for him, all desire, and all love for him by watching his decline. For the past few years, she can barely stand him. It also sounded like there was some verbal cruelty going on, where he constantly accused her of cheating and gaslighting her while cheating himself throughout their marriage, and spending all his money on substances, the usual. His accusations ramped up considerably once she lost about 200 pounds the good old-fashioned way. We were working on her divorce, and one of her provisions was that he keep her as the beneficiary on his life insurance, for obvious reasons. She assured us he would agree to everything she suggested in the paperwork if she talked him through it. One day we get an email from her saying to halt the divorce, not because they were reconciling, but because he refused to keep her as the beneficiary on his life insurance if they divorced. So she stopped the divorce, so that she could get the benefits when he inevitably passes away in a few months. We've had one where the opposing party, husband, found out his old wife, late 70s, was terminally ill. He started using every tactic in the book to delay the final hearing so that she would pass away before the divorce was finalized, and he wouldn't have to lose anything. We just got another where the couple agreed to everything beforehand, signed documents, agreed to a disillusion and how to share custody. Now husband has a vengeance hankering and wants to trash the disillusion, take everything from her and take away their kid from her. Why? Because she told him no when he asked for their kid a full day and night ahead of schedule when she had already made plans with the kid. Story 3 I'm not a divorce lawyer, but recently my mom's cousin's son got married, only to discover barely three months later divorce papers in a safe he and his ex-wife had at their house. Three months. Before he found the papers, everything was going perfect. About a month before he found the papers, he noticed she was a bit more distant and texting on her phone more, but he didn't think much of it. The day he found the papers, he jumped into action, clearing out his money from any joint bank account, looking around for any evidence of her cheating, and then setting a time to sit down and talk with her. When he did confess to her that he knew she was filing for a divorce, she basically said that she only married him because he was the safe choice. They fought and then she left, but she forgot to take her phone. He then decides to look at her text messages to find that there was one guy she was nonstop texting. Later, he confronted her again, with buddies as witnesses in case she tried pulling something, but she denied ever cheating on him and said the man was an FBI agent she was working on a case with. She's a cop. We still haven't been able to confirm whether this man is an FBI agent or not, but based on the messages that weren't deleted, it seems it was something more. In the end, she's still calling for divorce because she went with a safe choice, but decided that she wasn't happy with this decision. I'm still confused by that, not going to lie. My cousin had to move out of town and find a new job because she's a cop and can easily make his life a living hell. He loved the town he was living in, so it did truly break his heart when he figured he had to leave. Bringing your buddies as witnesses is a smart choice. Story 4 My stepdad's previous marriage lasted years, had three kids, 
Apparently was fine at first. He is from the USA and she recently moved there from Thailand. After a few years, she started only caring about his money and would flaunt it to everyone she met. The last few years of their marriage was a rocky slope. They would sleep in different beds and barely spoke, not to mention she was mean as frick to him and their second son. The stepdad knew he had to get out, but how? But one day she told him she was taking a trip back to Thailand to visit family and didn't want him to come. He was busy with work, so he was fine with it. She comes back and basically tells him the real reason she went was to go see her old boyfriend and cheat on him. She also told him that she will be making trips back frequently to date him on the side, but to not worry because my stepdad can still be intimate with her when he wants. He took that as the perfect opportunity to dip. I'm sure there's much more to the story as there always is, but from what I hear from my step-siblings, it doesn't seem too far-fetched. She's now talking to a doctor in the military that needs her to send him money to get out of jail. The reason he's in jail? Because he stole gold belonging to Al-Qaeda and got caught. But don't worry, he's going to share that gold with her when he gets out. Story 5 I work at an office that provides free services for individuals that have experienced DV. We had a client come in seeking sole custody of her children from her ex-husband who was in prison at the time. I cannot reveal things he did to her in private. They were extraordinarily horrifying. But I can tell everyone what had been exposed by news sources across several U.S. states and countries. The man's name is Francisco Jose Suyago, and he's from Argentina. His family is incredibly wealthy. I'm talking multi-billionaires. When he was 18 years old, he was imprisoned for a serious offense he committed. While in prison, he received his medical degree and license to practice anesthesiology. When he got out of prison, he got a job at a hospital, and for a few years, he was clean in the legal sense. He was still doing loads of substances, mostly snow. One day, he was late to work because he was hungover. Another anesthesiologist covered for him while he was out. This pissed him off more than you could imagine. He proceeded to bring in a duffel bag full of weapons and explosives, threatening to end everyone in the hospital. Needless to say, he was imprisoned again. He got out shortly afterwards because his family is hella rich. After getting out, he moved to the United States and got a job at a hospital in, I think, Arkansas? The hospital he worked at told a news source that they did a background check on him and that he came back with a clean record. Insane, right? Well, while he was in the States, he was found guilty of abducting a man as well as jury tampering. Once in prison, he attempted to escape by doing something bad to himself to go to a hospital. So this man is clearly a psychopath, and I leave it to your imagination on what he did to that poor woman and her children for the decade that she had to suffer with him. Story 6. He was frustrated by her hoarding. She was frustrated by his utter uselessness. He filed for divorce, and she was my client. Her prized possession was a room or two full of scrapbooking materials. His prized possession was a yard full of junk cars that he never worked on. They had no children and no real assets. They hated each other more than any two people I'd ever met. And the only terms they would agree to were these. He gets the scrapbooking stuff and she gets the cars. My client also took the house as he had no income and didn't want it anyway. It was the shortest divorce decree I ever drafted. I intentionally squeezed it into one page and the judge and I had a good laugh over it. Once the decree was signed and filed, she hauled all the scrapbooking stuff to the yard and he removed it to the dump. She then called a junk shop I referred to and had all of his cars removed from the yard. These two also fought over a toilet brush, and he didn't want to have to buy one when he moved out. I politely instructed my client to give him the damn toilet brush. This is so petty and so stupid. Holy jeez. Anyway, since you're already here, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. Story 7. Paralegal here. There's so many crazy divorces, and divorce will bring out the absolute worst in couples. When thinking of reasons a divorce started, this one stands out to me the most. At my last firm, we did general law, which included probate. A couple did their will with our firm. We drafted everything. They were mid-70s to early 80s, married 40 years total, divorced and remarried once. Husband wanted to put in his will that his kids get his entire estate, but did not want us to tell his wife. He wanted to have us make a secret will and a fake will. The fake will would be signed with her present, and then he wanted us to shred it and would come in later to sign the real will. He copied his wife in the email that had all of this information disclosed in it, Two weeks later, he called us and said he wanted to file for divorce instead. Bonus one. A previous client was pissed his wife was cheating on him. She wanted a non-contested divorce and wanted to use my boss specifically because she knew he was a great lawyer. He pretended to go along with her terms and contacted us literally two days before his wife and retained us. He said he didn't care how much money the retainer was, but wanted my boss so his wife couldn't have him as a lawyer. He called and paid first, so he won that battle. Story eight. Failed exorcisms. Client had an inner ear condition that caused chronic vertigo, but symptoms could be treated with medication. Husband was an evangelical who was convinced his wife, number one, had become possessed and that a vertigo and general crankiness with his methods were evidence of demonic possession. Number two, the medication she was taking was enabling the devil to hide inside her. 
and three, the only proper recourse was exorcism. He would hide her meds until she got dizzy and then try various methods of exorcism. This included sweating it out, put under blankets while incapacitated and locked in a room full of space heater, freezing it out, pretty much the reverse with AC, fans, and bags of ice, surprising it out. He would jump out and scare her like it was the hiccups, but instead of yelling boo, he would recite the Lord's Prayer or Psalms. The final straw was that he tried to surprise it out of her by pushing her down the stairs when they were heading out for dinner. Take note, this guy was some type of executive and they still went out to dinner after the stairs incident. She asked for the divorce at an Applebee's that night. I've often tried to picture that conversation. She was adamant that he was a total sweetheart and never acted out of malice or anger. Another one, my 90-year-old client, the husband, and his son retained me to initiate divorce proceedings with his 88-year-old wife. They'd been married 60 years. The wife had recently taken to roughing him up with his own cane because their daughter poisoned her into thinking he was hiding money from them. The battle came down to husband and son versus wife and daughter. At their first court appearance, my client showed up in an old 1950s-style pinstripe suit and fedora. It was a farmer his whole life. This was clearly the only suit he owned. He was such a meek and lovely old gentleman. I had to pass my client on to a new lawyer midway through the proceedings because I accepted a job in a different country. But I understand the divorce was eventually granted. Spending 60 years with someone and just having it devolve into that? That's quite sad. Story 9. My aunt was dating an unemployed dude for a while. He was staying in her house rent-free. They got married and were getting ready to go on the honeymoon. The new husband tells her he's not going because he has to take care of his plants at the house. Big fight. Aunt goes on the honeymoon with her sisters instead. She comes home and tries to kick him out of her house, but he refuses to leave. She tries to get the police involved. Dude is live-streaming on Facebook how he's being trapped in his own home. Police tell my aunt there's basically nothing they can do. Can file for eviction after a divorce. Dude gets to live in her house with his precious plants for like three months until everything legally gets worked out. Bonus story, kind of in the same category. I've had a lot of younger male potential clients come in for a divorce consults with their mother. Then during the consult, the mother does 98% of the talking and it's clear who actually wants the divorce. I'll usually escort mom to wait in the lobby while I talk to the son directly and most of the time he's just there to appease his mother. On a related note, I once had just the mother call for a consult because she said explicitly she wanted her son to get a divorce. I politely informed her that's not how divorces worked. Story 10. She was taken in Mexico and refused to pay ransom. Eventually, her family managed to pay and she was left on the side of the road. It is not outrageous as in petty, but outrageous is how absurd that is. I don't know how much they wanted as ransom, but it was substantial as the conversation between her family and him was how he had it liquid. And they had to liquidate investments to get that amount. She may have told me, she may not, something in pesos, and I didn't know the conversion rate. It was all a random number to me. This happened about seven years ago. It wasn't with her on the trip. She was traveling with cousins and went downstairs alone to get ice cream and wait for them to get ready. I do not know all the details. She was extremely distraught talking about it, and it was not necessary to pry. It was clearly traumatic, and even though I had a million more questions, I left it alone. Sounds like a good comedy movie. Story 11 I'm a lawyer that handles quite a few divorces, among other things, and I've seen all sorts of reasons for marriages ending. The only thing that is consistently true and relevant to this question is that it is never just for one reason, and it is never one-sided. In fact, I've started telling potential clients in our initial interview that I'm well aware that I'm going to uncover some dirt on my client in the process. Not to scare them, but to put their mind to ease that I've seen worse. The fact that you haven't been 100% an angel up to this point doesn't scare me, and I'd rather find out about it from my client beforehand than later on from their spouse at the worst possible moment. All this is just to say that when you hear about people divorcing over one stupid argument or mistake, usually that's just the straw that broke the camel's back. That said, some of the lighter straws I've seen include a guy who is 100% convinced that his wife, or client, is actually in love with his sister and just using him as a cover. But he also claims she's getting with me to pay for her legal fees and with every male whose phone number is in her call history. A woman who is divorcing my client because he was too sad after his father passed away last year. My client had to break down her door to get his father's ashes a few weeks after he left the house and she refused to let him back in or give them to him. And a woman who claims my client was emotionally cruel towards her because he refused to yell at her and sat in silence ignoring her when she screamed at him. He has this recorded, timestamp for the dates and time she insists the incidents occurred, and she's listened to them in his complete silence. She goes on tirades and insists this proves her point that he was emotionally distant and cruel. Story 12. Lawyer here. I also deal with family law. In the UK, you need a really good reason to divorce. Guy kept DIYing the house. There were never windows or doors in the house. There were small children and constant draft in the house, so it was accepted. Girl was taken to a strange ritual by his boyfriend and his family. 
It was all in foreign language she couldn't understand. It turned out later that it was some seriously strange wedding and she was the pride. Obsessive compulsive hoarding. These are what I remember. Usually it is all about seeing the children in alimony. And yes, I have yelled at them not going there. Don't speak to her, etc. They must listen. It is horrific. Usually they listen, but they keep calling you when they're buzzed. My best behaved client was the one who listened to all his wife's BS in court. I could see he was sweating like a pig. Face was red as peat, and he literally held his hands and fists under the table. Because he kept his mouth shut, we won. Wife messed it up. Also, I had a client who indulged in some recreational substance use. His dealer lives in the same apartment building as him. Went down one day to pick up some of that sweet, sweet snow. When the dealer, female, came to the door, he could hear his wife in the background. Turns out that his wife also liked that life and was getting her fix in with a neighborhood dealer. But it doesn't end there, because they all get on so well they start having parties and hanging out. Parties become out of hand, and hey presto, each week the husband and wife put their kids to bed and head downstairs to the dealer's flat for a feast of substances. A couple of months go by, and the wife comes home and says she's leaving him to be in a full-time same-gender relationship with the dealer. Dude is now stressed AF, but he can't score no more from his dealer who stole his missus. I'll end it with a divorce joke. Wife wants a divorce in court. Judge asks why. She tells the judge that his husband doesn't love her anymore. Judge asks the husband if it is true. Husband says no, but then the wife starts crying and sobs that he never tells me that he loves me. Husband replies, Damn it, woman. I told you that 15 years ago when we got married. I'll let you know if anything changes. Well, if you like these stories, here's more. YouTube thinks you're going to love this. Catch you in that video.